I think we're coming down to like the last uh, a little bit over a little bit over thirty minutes. Yeah, we're we're headed, now. We can we can close it out with Jodo. Yeah, which is Pokemon funny because I think I think Jodo, I think Jodo has probably the least probably. positives about it. Yeah. So you want to quickly go through them then, buddy? Uh, Brock's back. The battles are better. And you know what's funny about you saying Brock's back? When Jodo was announced in uh in America and they got the commercial, that was literally what they led with. Was, yes, Brock's back. Like that's their lead in for the Jodo series. Yeah, there's only three pros for me. Brock's back. The battles were better. And uh the league was was pretty top tier. The league was borderline amazing. Especially considering the shit we got from OS and even I mean and even uh Orange Islands can only do so much. But the fucking league in Jodo is probably still arguably one of the best leagues in the whole series. Uh because they probably gave it proper time and development. Nash wasn't fucking about the whole time. But the rest of Jodo as a whole Yeah, I'ma just talk Tyrone, what what other good things about Jodo? That 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 is that is it. Uh, with, with uh, this kind of goes into the Brock's back thing, but with Brock returning, it's very clear that once he comes back, it's return to formula with these three. And I love their dynamic. If anything, I think it strengthens their dynamic now because um now now Pokemon has more of a structure, so they know how to do Brock and Misty episodes now. I mean, they still have very few episodes compared to Ash, but at least they do it now. Like the Nine Tails episode with Brock. Or the uh, the World Islands with Misty. That's her. That's technically her arc. Yeah. Sad, sadly. Um, but uh, yeah, like like they they get more episodes. Yay! Brock and Misty actually get more development now. They're not just set pieces. They there is a little bit of three dimension happening for these characters, which which is good. Good. We, they needed that. Pokemon needed, and it feels like it was a return to formula. Like. The, it's almost like, hey, look, we found a way to make OG have a structure and still be funny. There's still some good funny episodes. Um, there is sadly some, eh, some samey episodes. Sadly, hey, but, hey, but we're hold on, land. yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're going back in positive land. Um, the Pokemon get a lot more personality here. I I like Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and the OG crew, but Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile are fun. They're a mess, but they're fun. I think the best moment to describe them is when Gary declines a battle with Ash, and he's like, nah, you're not gonna be a challenge for me. And Ash goes, my Pokemon are more than capable. When he says that, Chikorita's like nuzzling on his leg, Cyndaquil doesn't know where the fuck he is, and Totodile's dancing like a fucking idiot. And I and Noctowl's asleep. I love it. This is a perfect reflection of, of Ash. And his control over these new Pokemon. This is his new team, and this is how they act. But at least it's funny because it gives them personality. Bro, Bulbasaur's personality sort of grows as time passes. Plus, I think Bulbasaur gets the most time with Ash out of all of the others. Uh, Squirtle's personality, once you said it already, once it starts to peak, he leaves. He gets booted to be a firefighter. Yeah. And Charizard Fire me. Hits, and Charizard hits the fucking rawest point in his personality only to leave to a bunch of other Charizard. So here we get a whole new set of Pokemon and they are by all accounts fucking idiots. But he does get them together a lot quickly. A lot quicker. Because he's a better trainer now. We actually see that there's a Cyndaquil episode now. Good. We get to see Ash and Cyndaquil train overnight in order to beat Skarmory because they lost in the first fight. That's good. We get to see Chikorita be jealous of Pikachu because P Ash has had Pikachu longer, so obviously he's going to stick with Pikachu, but Chikorita's a fucking brat. So we got to deal with that. Totodile gets like this love arc where he's in love with the Pokemon, but it gets shot down uh, because the Azumarill likes another Pokemon, so Totodile gets heartbroken. Good! We are getting... Pokemon episodes, like really good ones, like episodes that help us feel a little more flavor from these guys. They're not just members of Ash's team now. And yes, the I'm not implying that his Kanto team didn't have good episodes. It's just they were far and in between. Whereas Ash's new team, they get 
several moments to shine. He diversifies him a lot more in this one. Except poor Heracross. Heracross gets like weirdly a running... Heracross gets a running joke and then he gets kicked. Only to come back later. Heracross is, look, I like honey. Let me suck a Bulbasaur's bulb. That's funny, right? But he does whoop Scizor's ass and I like that. Um... <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to you. The fucking rival bugged. Bitch, I don't give a fuck if you have evolution. I got hands. Well, it, it goes to show that even though Sizzle, uh, that Heracross was a running joke, he meant business. He meant fucking business. Yeah, for some uh, reason, Heracross consistently has hands throughout the entirety of if it's Oh, run. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why they probably had to ax him, because this was still in early stages of Ash's development. So they couldn't have Ash dominate, but they, they could have him fucking, like... Even though he was low key dominating anyway, because he had a oh, yeah. fucking Charizard, Charizard on his which, team, which they Brock and Misty actually tackle that. They talk about it. They go, "Yo, you can't use Charizard in every fight. That's bullshit." And you're in the back, like, who the, why, why the fuck not? But I do yeah, like why? that. I want to see him use it against Bugsy. Damn it. Yeah, that but I do. Funniest, but that I do like the that. Funniest shit, dog. And I, the other pro, I like that Ash actually earns every one of his badges now. The battles are still looking a little weird, but they're better. They're better. They're they're tremendously they're actually better. Battles. How about they're that? They're battles. I just know that there's literally a fight where Ash fights Steelix, and you want to know what his strategy is? Cyndaquil, use flamethrower. Flamethrower, Cyndaquil. All right, Steelix. Here comes Steelix. Cyndaquil, get ready. Flamethrower. All right, Cyndaquil. This is it. Flamethrower. All right, Ash. Fuck. We get it. Flamethrower. Hey, <laughs> I swear to God, if you look at that episode, that's his only strategy against Steelix. I mean, to be Nothing fair, more, more. but Tyrone, Tyrone in the games, that's what you do. You flamethrower the fuck out of her steel types. Or, you know, you wet them. But, you know, if you ain't got water, as wet. I mean, nowadays, I would expect if Cyndaquil tried to use flamethrower, they would have Steelix, like, counter it. So Ash has to find a creative way to use flamethrower on him. Or something like teach Cyndaquil dig so he burns. Ah, uh, uh, what do you you think this is Hoenn, bitch? Yeah, now nah, yeah, obviously Hoenn is when we start getting fucking more strategies. But here the battles are are a, a lot of the battles here are battles of attrition. <laughs> like, remember, remember, give Kevin something that you you're taking everything else. I can't think of anything yeah. else. That, Past the shit you've said, yeah, actually. Go, go ahead, KG, because I, I think those are my pros, is that it's a also return good, formula, and they are they have battles now. Hmm. Good, good, good fucking luck, Kevin, because I, I can't think of the shit else. Okay, I got some pros. What? The fucking movies were some of the best in the Oh, yeah, movie, oh, movie oh. three was coded. I see what you've done. You've, 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 you've given up on it entirely. <laughs> said, hey... But the movie's really fucking hey, right. good. Movie 3 was fucking good, bro. It's and good. Heroes? Let's, man. The OST was also a, a polish as well as step into the right direction, too. Miyazaki started producing some of the best songs in that saga as well. Orion and, Sword goes not movie 4. Yeah, like, uh, yeah movie 4 hey, was listen, kind of listen, man, you gotta get some hits, uh, but There were more hits than uh, Miss. How about that? That's because there was only three films. Hey, uh, listen, compared to uh, original and Orange Islands, we only got one. They at least went out yeah, of the but, way. But, Arguably, well, that's true because 2000 is, is the best thing, and that was only the second film. So, yeah. Mewtwo some bullshit, but that, that's me personally. <laughs> well, that's because Mewtwo, Mewtwo is an overblown special in Japan and a mediocre ass movie in America. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in all sincereness, to go back to the, to the show and try to say some form of positivity... Uh, I really do believe they actually fixed one of the biggest issues they had in OS, which was the characters. And not necessarily Ash and Misty and Brock and all that. I'm talking about the characters they introduce into that show. Like Casey, for example. Uh, yeah. Who ends up actually being brought back at a later point. You know, one of the criticisms we had was like, oh my god, these characters are introduced and we never see them again. And what did they do in this series? They actually introduce characters and then bring them back again. And they're usually pretty good for the most part. I do and they, like they, that. And, and they did rebring back like Duplica and shit. Yeah, some of the characters they introduced in some of the past generations or sagas are now in this one too, which is <laughs> mean a couple years ago? Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still, that's a step in the right direction. They understand. Oh, definitely. Uh, like they they set the foundation up in Kanto, uh, slightly tweaked it up in Orange Islands, and then improved upon some of the things they missed out on 
in Johto, which is the character side of things. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Ram Ram Ambassador TSS says movie three is not good, but that's a whole well, other that, issue that we've uh, can of worms. I we've know. already agreed to murder him over that, but that's you know, hey, it's their it's their opinion, but it's neither here nor right. So d d damn, uh, but you know, what up, Tish? Sorry, but uh, yeah. So overall, Johto to me. It unfortunately has the least amount of positive things I can bring up about it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just more so I am overall indifferent to it. Uh, you know, like even the humor is not hitting as hard as it was with Orange or even Kanto. Like, uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that's pretty much all the positives I can say. Oh, uh, I guess if you want to bring up a little nice attention to detail, this is also the series when they transitioned uh, into the new art direction as well with the uh, animation side of things. Because I think this yeah. is when they went digital this time around. Uh, so Yeah, that's why it looks cleaner. Mm -hmm. At least towards the butt end. But they did use that during the openings, though. Uh, the new animation style. Oh, no. All right. So I'm going to kill him in NYC. But that's a whole other issue. Don't worry about all that. Which one? You're not. You're not. Yes, you, yes. Wait, wait, who? Who did you think? Who did you think I was talking about, Tyrone? No, no, I'm just making sure. <laughs> Earl, do that thing. We be like, what's up, it's Jaeger? Uh oh, okay. <laughs> Aaron Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> That's me on the floor. What happened? Yo, you thought you thought you gonna sneak up on me, bitch? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where the fuck am I? <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck you talking to? <laughs> no. The one other credit I'll give it, uh, and I forget about it because the Tyro kind of reminded me of it when he mentioned the World uh, World Islands, is that they did try to do like mini arcs within Jodo, like the the Silver Wing one, uh, or the Lugia one actually. Yeah. The little the Lugia arc with Richie, which is another example of them bringing back an OS character. And reusing them. So I just hear the Lugia arc is better than the actual like Team Rocket fucking with the Lake of Rage stuff. We don't. We don't. Yeah, that's the other thing. They use more video game arcs. Yeah. They try to. They try to stick to that. But I'll be real with you. If y'all real, if y'all question why the, the the list of pros wasn't as long or as crazy, because we only I'll be real, we only took about ten minutes to go through all that. It's it's for one reason. Because for all the pros that Jodo has, Jodo, Jodo is just a lesser version of OS with better fights. Because Tyrone, for example, brings up the Mons and talks about they have more personality, which is true. Totodile's hyperactive. Cyndaquil is like a quiet little mouse, kind of shy. And Bayleaf is boy crazy. And I guess Noctile's a narcoleptic, but that's a whole other issue. And Heracross is a is a is in the vor. Um but if we're talking about like character progression and development of his Johto Mons, the best one. Bayleaf. Like, yeah, I think it's fucking Bayleaf. Bayleaf, Bayleaf is low key. I say low key his ace without being his ace. Because she would still lose fights, but she was low key his best Jodo Mon with honorable mentions going to like uh Heracross when, when it shows up. Heracross and maybe Noctow. Yes. And Noctow you're just is only really I'm gonna be honest, Noctow's really only known for the one fight, and that's against Morty. Yeah, actually I don't even I can't think of half of any of his other fights. Noctow widely, why, why, uh, weirdly enough, gets more notor notoriety in fucking Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, we'll get because to that when we get to because that. Because it, it gets more usage. But, like, yeah, they get personalities, but that's, I feel like the writers were like, we did enough. The what fuck mean, we you did? did? Enough. <laughs> the fuck? You know what? I view, I view Snorlax as one of his Jodo Mons, because realistically, Snorlax was, was throwing hands. Actually, Snorlax consistently throws hands throughout its entire run. It's one of the few Mons... That's like really fucking consistent because, you know, it's a fucking Snorlax. And Hyper uh, Beam meant a one hit kill in Pokemon back in the day. So like, yeah, like, it, that motherfucker. You something with Hyper Beam, it's over. It's a fucking problem. But like the rest of his team are like, realistically, I, I find Totodile to be the, one, the most boring of, of the three starters. He's hyperactive. That's it. At least with Cyndaquil, his whole arc was about gaining confidence and becoming stronger. 
Toriyama is boring as fuck. Noctowl becomes unnoticeable after his Morty fight. Heracross likes to bob and weave out of the plot. And Bayleaf, although is the most interesting, it still boils down to a weird ro romance story between Ash and his Pokemon. A gimmick that would be used later on in a movie. Twice. Uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, his that, that, that Pokemon right. And then on top of that, the reasons we lost the OG team. See, losing like, oh, Snorlax is, in, is at, at Oak's lab. Muck is at Oak's lab. Kingler's at Oak's lab. That's fine. Charizard's going to be with other Charizard. What? Squirrel's going to be a firefighter. What? <laughs> what? You, you start off as a gangster. Bulbasaur, come watch all of the other Pokemon that uh, Professor Oak's been watching for years. Uh? <laughs> and you're just sitting there going, what the fuck happened to his t It's almost like the show realized he was getting too good and nerfed the fuck out of him for no good reason. Well, I know what the reason was, to make the battles challenging again. But they're only challenging because they're artificially challenging because he's using weaker mons. It's almost like Ash was like, well, we get it's kind of like what he'll end up doing at Hoenn. Well, I don't want to come in here and steamroll the whole team. So I guess we're going to just have, we're just, I'm just going to use Johto mons. And I'm just like, who the fuck? Who the fuck? No one in no one in any series does that. Okay, no one in a game goes. I caught a Snorlax that I'm not gonna use in my battle because I want to beat him with weaker mods. Like the fuck? It, it doesn't make any sense. The other reason I'll mention, and then I'll let Tyrone and uh, well, actually I'll let KG go next. The other issue is it's not as funny, partially due to writing standards changing, but now all the new shit that. OS did it's no longer like new shit like Johto repeats a lot of arts or like premises because they worked in the original series and with the new writing style it doesn't really hit the same A is not fresh and new because it's just literally not fresh and new and two it just doesn't hit the same because it's not it's just not it's not as funny in general, it's just not written as cleverly, and I don't know if that's the dub or the or the Japanese version. It just it just wasn't as funny. Um, there are other issues too, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna leave that in the hands of Mister Mister Kevin of G. Thank you. Uh, so my biggest criticisms that I have to give this show is uh, I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> like that, that's my glaring. Damn. The issue is that it's so that's actually worse than I was gonna go for. Jesus Christ. It is painfully long, and you could tell where they just stretched. I mean, that's the reason why that one meme came through where he was going to Ecritik City, and they're like, oh, he went from this route to Ecritik. How long did it take him? About, like, 20-something episodes. What? But it's just a straight line to 20-something episodes. Uh, but that's the issue. It's like, this series had no idea how long it was going to last that when they realized oh shit this could last a lot more longer than we initially initially thought they had to start coming up with ideas that it felt like they had to recycle a lot of plot points that they brought in the past which could also be why they brought characters back as well because they had no idea what to do uh with the story and it you could tell it the most especially with the gs ball plot because they had that idea in motion and then they decided to incorporate that i hate into the it movie. Uh, i hate it and it sucks too because it's like oh we're gonna use it at some point oh and then we, we, we never touch it again and i think that could have been a really cool thing that uh the series could have benefited from but because they took that plot point out of the uh series uh, it absolutely hindered Johto as a whole. I don't like his Pokemon that much as well. As well. Uh, the Pokemon in this series are very uh, forgettable. I think they could have been handled a lot better. Uh, I do believe, as Tyrone mentioned before, they are significantly better developed. And I think you have to give credit where credit's due. DP is the one that did a great job with taking care of the, of the Johto squad. Because Cyndaquil and Noctowl, even Fanfy all got some form of development. Oh, in that I fucking scene. forgot about Fanfy. Jesus. Yeah, Christ. Fanfy came from this. Yeah, wait, wait till they tell him about Lavatar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Does man. anyone like that arc, realistically? I, 
thought it was I okay. Do. Yeah, I thought it was okay. It sounds like you're begrudgingly saying. Well, it. the problem is that Ash doesn't use Lavatar for any real fights. So because it, it's not his. It, it, you wonder what this feels like? It feels like Poi Pole Light. Like before Poi Pole exists. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, is that really fair, though, to do that? Yeah. I think the best way to say it is that this is the Togepi plotline. Yeah, it feels like, yeah, it feels like it's a prototype for when Ash winds up taking care of babies later. Yeah. Because when Ash gets babies later, he does a significantly good job. I still think to this day, Scraggy's probably the best baby Pokemon Ash had. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's my criticism uh, with this series. It's just that it's so... It, it does things. Yes, it does wonderful moments. Like, the battles are great. I still believe the Claire fight is up there as one of the best battles the series has. Yeah. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, but unfortunately, that can only take it so far because there are a lot, and I mean a lot of episodes you have to go through to get to that point. And they aren't exactly what you would call fun. More so, this is the series where filler really became... Uh, it's, it's attached it's, to the series of Pokemon. The, there's one word to describe it. It's fucking boring. Some wow. of it's just, just fucking like, yo. Dude, and the worst something. part is there are elements of episodes that are boring that could have been fun had they done a better job when it came to the narrative. Of also, it. Orion Sword, you're right. AG does develop the fuck out of Don Fan. I forgot about that. Actually, AG does that with Don Fan. Does that with fucking uh, Snorlax a lot. But that's. I don't want to go too far in that. This will turn to an AG dick yeah, sucking the, thing. We can't yeah, do that. that that's going to be for when we save that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, good can continue. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's pretty much all I had to say overall. Uh, my criticism is just that it's not as memorable compared to a lot of other series. That's why I prefer the Orange Islands because despite, you know, the short length, that also just means that it's much easier to remember the good episodes overall where... With this one, you can only... It, it felt like I had to pick and uh, grab what they gave me and just use that, you know? And uh, unfortunately, that doesn't really mean it's good. It just means that, oh, you're only just remembering the good parts of the show. And that's really it. Uh, so overall, that's all I got to say on it. Uh, who's next on this one? Tyrone? Tyrone. Uh, okay, you guys tackled most of it, but I'll go. Uh, it's very clear, I mean pacing pretty much is what I was gonna say, but it's very clear, I think Pokemon at this point didn't realize, they didn't realize what they had at this point, and they were like, oh, because, I mean, I think you all know, anybody who, anybody who looks into the anime re relatively knows that technically OG was, uh, Kanto was supposed to be the end, they didn't realize how many episodes they would be able to go after this, so it's very clear that since they thought it was gonna be over, this is the ending result of them like burning out. I can see them burning out here. I, you can definitely see it. Team Rocket has become basically a standard at this point. And out of all the comedic interactions, Team Rocket falls here, like starts falling here. This is it. This is, like they're, they still got some good jokes. Oh but, shit, but, I forgot about that. Yeah, they still got some good jokes. But at, at this point, you really start seeing like, oh. Uh, Oh no, they're fucking lame, aren't they? Ah, oh. it now it's ah ha ha ha. Pikachu's trapped in this not electric proof thing that he's in. You're gonna have to figure out how to beat us. Ha ha ha! Oh look, the Pokemon we discovered earlier in the episode is, has found a way to use its ability that it was trying to use earlier in the episode that it couldn't do. Cue the music. Oh, Tyro hits the hits one of the main problems. They use Team Rocket for Ooh, Pokemon their formula, development. Their formula fucking sucks. It's so repetitive. Uh, and then it's like, oh look, the Pokemon did the thing and or evolved. And then it crushes the thing that Pikachu was trapped in. Pikachu's free. Pikachu, Thunderbolt. Team Rock is blasting off again. Thanks for doing that thing, Pokemon. And the Pokemon's like, Pokemon. And then fucking, it, uh, and then the narrator's like, what new shit will Ash and the others run into? Find out next time. And I'm like, oh. 
As the journey continues. Wasn't, yeah. jo- wasn't oh. Jodo the region that had Team Rocket in every episode? Too? Yes! Yes! Oh, God. Yes! Please. Even if it didn't warrant it. There's, I swear to fucking God, there's episodes of them digging under the gym. There's yep. episodes where they're in the gym but get caught by Pokemon in the back. There's episodes where they, like, find they have to look for a kitchen. I think there's, like, a couple of episodes where they ran out of money. So they didn't, they couldn't use, like, the mechs they were using. So they ended up using, like, pitfalls and net traps. And the funny thing is, by the way... Oh, and then they're fucking running a Deli Bird, and Deli Bird's like a running joke for a while. I hate that joke. I really Mm. do. It wasn't funny to begin with. (laughs) It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be Deli Bird shows up, and then when he shows up, he uses present. But the present is a fucking bomb, so they blow up. That's the whole joke. Whole fucking joke. Funny. Oh, we didn't mention we didn't mention Jigglypuff earlier, but Jigglypuff's joke was that they fall asleep. But Jigglypuff didn't show up enough times for it to be a problem. And she showed up here and there. Deli Bird starts to show up so many fucking times. I'm like, God damn. Oh yeah, and they get Wobbuffet. But even Wobbuffet can't save this. Wobbuff- Wobbuffet's Wobbuffet, whole Wobbuffet. joke is he's obnoxious. The problem with Wobbuffet is that Wobbuffet has the potential to be really fucking useful, and he is in certain portions of certain fights. And then they, for some reason, forget about him, and then they lose. Because remember, they can't fucking win. This is where, if people always ask me why I get, I'm sick of Team Rocket, Johto, bar none, is their worst region. Because they don't have any side shit that they're doing yet. And they still got Ekans and Arbok, and you, and then you get, and you get the only two extra gags you get is Dilly Bird and Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet to me has never been fucking funny. He doesn't really start getting kind of funny until maybe like Sinnoh slash uh, DP. But he is, it's such a boring prompt. And the way that they develop Ash's team is always through some Team Rocket shit. They use a mech, a Pokemon evolves. They use a mech, a Pokemon learns a new move. They use a mech. The Pokemon of the day evolves. Do they fucking learn a new move? And maybe Ash learns something. And maybe Misty learns something. Granted, one other positive. The goodbye episode with Misty, Brock, and Ash is probably one of the best things in Johto. But fuck, and I mean this, fuck Team Rocket. Team Rocket is the one of the worst aspects of Johto. You wonder what the sad part is, though? They even get a cup. They, they get a few good episodes themselves. But they do not stick out in the in the in the the fucking goulash of terribleness. Je- Jesse gets an episode with Chansey, that's really good, like legitimately good, because the Chansey evolves into Blessy later. Um, uh, and it's good. It's good. The it's problem also too is, it's early on too. Yeah, but the problem is it's muffled under so much just fucking garbage. And thankfully, this isn't the. Th- I think they're starting to get into it, but I think this is the start of Team Rocket and having to do the stupid shit where they rhyme all the fucking time. Isn't this when they start changing the model? Or is, it, is it, or is that, or is it, remember he, they, no, they were like, I think that, AG oh, is, I think AG, they start changing the model. I think what they do in Johto, what they do, they say the model, but they add, they add lib a little bit sometimes. They'll add like different shit. Yeah, it's, you could tell it was like almost like Team Rocket themselves were trying to figure out ways to make themselves still seem relevant. And you're just sitting in the back going, shut the fuck up. Like, like now much. they'll be like, they'll be like, prepare for trouble. You kids, you twerps are in over your head. Make it double. Now we'll send you all to bed. <laughs> like, like, and then they'll say the motto. But in AG, they change the whole motto. Like the whole thing changes. The rhyming problem only come uh, becomes a real problem and TPCI gets the dub and they only do it sparingly in four kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's what happens. And, also, uh, Ryan the, Sword said the digging under the gym, gym was AG's gag. I, I could have sworn that. Oh, Midnight's coming in with a party of nine in the discussion. Let's go, Midnight. Hell yeah. But so, it's, it's, Midnight's, it's yeah, Midnight's a friend of mine. She does uh, mostly, she mostly does like food and cooking uh, streams. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, she's cool. She's cool. She's, but she's like good. she's good peoples. Like even even when we got the arcs, like the World right. Islands. Remember, remember how the World Islands ends with the fucking fight with Ash and Misty? Well, yeah, and then Misty gets stomped by some rando, but yeah. Yeah. And that and I was and that's where she gets Corsola, I think, as around that portion. She gets uh, Corsola. 
She gets course light during the Royal Islands, I thought. Yeah, she does. She does. Yeah, because she uses the lure ball for that. Because originally, Ash and Misty fought over the Totodile, which I like that episode, actually. But uh, she winds up getting uh, Corsola later. But my issue is that they do the, they do the same gag with Psyduck, where, oh, I get... Oh, if, if Kingler can knock it out before it, it gets a headache, and I'm just kind of like... Are we? I, I don't like that one only because fucking... Ash found a way around the Psyduck thing uh, in Kanto, so it's weird that in Johto he just falls for it. Well, it's not anything he falls for it. He's, he's literally trying to beat the clock out. He's like, if I can knock it out before it triggers, it won't matter. Yeah, but I mean, that's extremely stupid considering that in the first time he fought Psyduck, he just was like, oh, I'm just going to tickle it to death and then beat it. Yeah, I, I, I just died. It feels weird. It feels weird. It feels like they just needed Ash to lose so that Misty can go to the next uh, round. Yeah, it's it, and that's the other, that's the other kind of writing I don't like. When you What's make another like? when you make a character incompetent for the sake of of boosting another character. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what they did with Ash, at least in that arc. Yeah, Midnight. We're talking about the OG series, and we're talking about the pros and cons of the of the series as a whole. But like. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, just, just to me, like just going back on the cons, uh, that pacing, that pacing in Johto is bad. That pacing, is a bit, it honestly, is a bit. that that master quest shit for the world, I, that is that is rough. That is. It oh had a God. good idea, but the execution leaves uh, a lot yeah, to be that desired. Was, that, was, that was that was rough. That was so many like Ash and the gang are on a boat in order to head towards this area, and I'm like. Orange Islands at least had Lapras, so like they could do this better. Here, they're on an island, they're on a boat, next boat leaves in a soon, so they gotta head out and oh it's painful. It's 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 painful. I'll be real with you, I blo I block out that part of the story. Exactly. Nobody remembers, and KG said it before, is that it's very it's not memorable. Does anything all. of note even happen during that? The, the course of part. Thing. The Lugia and Corsola shit. That's like the only two good things. Lugia and Corsola. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, like, it, it's a whole lot of nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Whole lot. Like, they don't get it. Like, it wouldn't be as bad if they, like, came back different than when they left for the World Islands, but they don't. They, they are essentially the same. They are the same all the way through, and it, it, it's painful. It is, it is garbage. <laughs> Isn't and then right after that is when we get like after that shit is when we get into the Lavatar arc because that's right before the league. Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. And there were so, oh, oh, I'm so Rock of Wolves, Crobat, and Crobat. Yeah, he does get Crobat around this time, which yeah, he gets Crobat. He gets he gets Unfortunately, and I we should have said this very uh, from the very beginning as a con for just the whole thing as a whole. Brock and Misty's Pokemon, they don't fucking matter. <laughs> the only the only two that matter are the new ones they get. So for example. Brock's go bad to finally actually devolves into a go bad in Johto and then again yeah. into a crowbat. And then he gets into a crowbat, but it's a Zubat for the most part. But Zubat. And then, you get, and then you also get a fortress. He gets Pinecone and Fortress. And eventually his 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 uh eventually his his uh Onyx evolves into a Steelix, but I think that doesn't happen until fucking That's like also, AG. That's like yeah, Chronicles into Wasn't AG. Wasn't that the Chronicles Chronicle special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Chronicles into AG. Yeah, it doesn't happen for a while. Yeah. Misty only two upgrades is Corsola, and then she gets that. And Polywag then her Poly evolves in a Poly world. Yeah. And then it evolves again at towards the end into Politoed. Yeah, yeah, Poly yeah. Toad. I think those and are the only two upgrades she if we, gets. If we, if we rewind it, I believe Misty. Starts also, what's up, T Roy with, Jenkins? Hey, Misty starts this off with like. She starts this whole thing off with like Goldeen, Star You, and Starmie. Like those are though that's what she's got going into this. Starmie gets barely any screen time. I forget she has it. Yeah, Goldeen. Goldeen is restricted to water, so it 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 doesn't get any moments. And Star Yu's like her only battling mon at that point. No, and she it, has Horsey. No, I was about to get into that. Oh. She gets she gets Psyduck later, which Psyduck's a running joke. Then she gets Horsey, which Horsey's development. It's like one episode. Is it isn't development? It? <laughs> is it development? It's like one episode, isn't it? I swear I forget episodes that Horsey's in. If it's in it, I forget it. It's what? only in it. Like I remember. Oh, it's in the Eevee episode because they have yeah, it swimming in the pond. The, it leaves the ink that they can follow. Brock, he gets what? 
Brockett. He gets his Vulpix snatched from him. Oh, yeah, yeah gets, that's right. He loses he gets, Vulpix in this region, Brock right? Brock has Geodude. He gets Geodude and Onyx. And then after Geodude and Onyx, he gets uh, Zub Vulpix. Zub Zubat, then Vulpix. He loses Vulpix to what's her name? He loses Vulpix and Johto, though. He doesn't well, lose he it. He gives it back. I'm, he said he's going to give Vulpix back, which he does. He does give Vulpix back. But Zubat evolves into Crow, uh, Golbat and Crobat. And then he catches Pineco into Fortress. That's that's Brock's whole jam. Which, by the way, Pineco. that's the only... Fortress, for some reason, was the only mod he brings in the AG, which I don't fucking get. Which, Geodude probably got the most development out of Brock's minds at the time because it's small and it's easy to draw. There's so many situations where you could go, oh, they could just end this by using Onyx, but... They don't do it. Really? I think yeah. I, you know, I think it I think it's Crowback gets the most development personally. Can I bring this up real quick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh one of the coolest moments, the, probably the only cool moment I could think off the top of my head. Remember when in movie four Onyx literally yeeted the Tyranitar? Yes. Dog. The way they animated that shit was hilarious. He's literally <laughs> yeah, he has, like, he's because like, his like, hands are just stretched out and he just flips. Yeah. yeah, he's like he's doing like a continuous cartwheel across the fucking sea. I'm like, oh my god. I, I what's, the, what's the what's the story what's the story mean the shooting stars music yeah the now i need to see the animated <laughs> yeah yeah he like gets knocked into oblivion because onyx is a big ass pokemon but obviously the artists don't want to fucking keep drawing him so there's so many episodes where i'm like just use onyx dude you can solve this whole thing just by using and it. he never and he never fucking does but he doesn't do it and like yeah the, that's like the i would if i had to pick a con as a whole that's the con is misty and brock's pokemon get barely any screen time like <laughs> but you know can, oh, I, can I bring up a positive though Togepi? I'm just kidding. No, no, uh, no. Can I bring up a positive though about Brock and Misty? They were probably used beautifully in the movies. Oh yeah, the third movie. They're they are they are in it to win it. Like yeah. they are, the they're actually movie. gym leaders. In that yeah, movie. they're actually gym leaders in that movie, and I like. Even though, even though they're not used at all at much yeah. in, in movie five and in movie four, they're just background characters. Yeah, you know what? I, I do like that movie five. They still had them. You know the way they promoted movie five i thought brock and misty weren't in it they well they kind of aren't well yeah but like the posters and the trailer i'm like is this the movie that ash is just doing without him yeah because it, it, it was in that awkward in between ag situation like it was going to be before ag because it's promoting latios and latias so i seriously thought that this was like that moment where ash left them and then just did this this is what he's doing well, like I said, the good like job that was of that the film. boat ride on their way to AG or something. Exactly. I was saying, yeah. I was gonna say the majority of that, the majority of that movie. I would say at least half that movie they're not around for. Yeah, they're removed. They're removed from the plot, and then they're put back in at like the end. You know, right in time for Latios to die, huh? Yeah. What? But Ooh. yeah, like yeah, I'm sorry. Like go, like even somebody said, like I know you said Crobat. Even him, like all his development got rushed here because Crobat's a Johto mon, so they had to promote it. Like, <laughs> yeah, they actually because it evolved into a, a Golbat in Johto. It wasn't right. a Golbat. It didn't turn into a Golbat until Johto. Yeah, because they I mean, knew that Golbat turns into Crobat. <laughs> so they dual evolved it in the same region. I think it was right, kind of close together, actually. Yeah, I would have to look at the episode gap, but yeah, it's like extremely close. Actually, you know what? Like, Fuck it, I'll go look real quick. I'm yeah, curious. go ahead. I'll keep them busy. Uh, yeah, and just, just between that and the repetition, Johto unfortunately leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. I just, ugh, it. And Ash doesn't really get a real rival here outside of Gary. Like, out, outside of Gary, Casey seems like she's gonna be, and for some reason, Johto drops her. They just say, fuck her. And I'm thinking in my mind, did they forget her? No, because she's in Chronicles. Well, then what the fuck, Pokemon? Why is Casey just thrown away like this? He spends what a 30... weird pattern. So found it. He spends 31 episodes as a Golbat. What? And then he and then he evolves into a Crobat. How many episodes is he a Zubat? 159. What the fuck? <laughs> Man, had a Neverstone on, I guess. Remember, remember. Oh boy, Zubat just stayed for the long haul. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't evolve until hold on. Wasn't it that right. episode when Jesse got possessed by that mask or something? I think so, yeah. That was such a weird episode. I by remember the way. that four kids promo because they made it such a big deal. 
they said it was supposed to be the one that shapes the world or some shit like that. Like yeah. they made well, it like they they made it such a significant deal. Well, they did that for a lot. Like I remember the Stanler episode wasn't a big deal, but the the fucking commercial goes, "If you sleep in, you miss out on this heated adventure." Sleep in on what? The fucking Storm the Stanler episode? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that Stanler episode was kind of cute. I mean, it is, but, but they, they, they ride that shit home. Oh, like, yeah, they, they yeah, made they that do. sound like as if it's going to be the game changer moving forward. Like I told you, if in the, in the 90s, they sold the fuck out of Pokemon. Like they, 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 they just said, oh, okay, get yeah, bet Pokemon's on. All right, we'll, we'll get these kids to sit down. We, we got you. For, you. How do you like four episode marathons on Saturdays? Wait, what? That's another <laughs> thing, too. Pokemon got so many marathons on Kids WB. Like, st- I want to argue that I think they got the most marathons. Good. You deserve it. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, this also translates to the fact that th- this was a Japanese show. So they were getting episodes pretty much whenever they can get them. But, God, I swear, swear, they showed this show so many times. Not just on Saturdays. Uh, They had, like, the weekly... I can't remember what it's called. Like, the... The weekend tune show or some shit. It was like during the day, right after school. So about three o'clock, four o'clock. They would just show like cartoons from Kids WB and Pokemon was there at four o'clock. You come home, you come to school, Pokemon will find your ass no matter where the fuck you are. It, it's showing at four. Fuck you. Fuck your homework too, because it's showing at four. <laughs> <laughs> On Kids WB. On Kids WB. Like, like they'll call you up. Are you doing your homework? Yeah, why? Why the fuck are you doing that? Why aren't you watching Pokemon at four? I don't know. You turn your fucking TV on then. And don't disturb your mother. She's watching The Young and the Restless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's what came on. I'm sorry. That's what. That's the order. It actually worked perfect because my grandmother, I lived with her, and she loved The Young and the Restless. And I loved Pokemon, so we had an understanding. Neither of us talked to each other at four o'clock because our shows are on. <laughs> I know you. I don't know if you guys count it, but to me, Pokemon just being in America was a pro alone, for this series at least. Oh, they knew how to treat it. Yeah, they knew how to treat it. They knew how to treat it. They knew how to fucking treat this show. That I will say that more than anything. Make fun of four kids all you want, but they had chemistry. All right, being four kids. Yeah. Oh, uh, and TSS actually corrected me on this, and he's right. Um, but not four them. kids. No, <laughs> not four kids. <laughs> not four kids, but four kids entertainment. entertainment. More specifically. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What you mean. They had chemistry. They knew how to work it. They knew but the game. Them. Hell, even their Yu-Gi-Oh shit. For as much as they centered, they still had chemistry. It didn't stop love in the states anyway. Exactly. They knew what they were doing. They knew how. To, they knew how to make a fun dub. And I would beg that they are they are the frontiers of why we start watching some of the anime dubs that we started watching was because they did a good job with them. Say yeah. what you want. Say all the mistranslations that you have. Say the censorship. At least they knew how to make these characters likable enough for you to want to watch them. And with that being stated, I think we're I think we're done. Think so? I I, I mean, what what else? Um, yeah, I guess just to round it out, the, the OG series. Um, the OG series. If you guys are haven't watched the OG series, like, cause I know some of y'all in the chat. Believe it or fucking not, we're old, Terrell KG. We're old. Um, there's some people who've never even seen the series because they never started po- with Pokemon here. They started later. Some people oh, started in fucking Diamond and Pearl and shit. We're not gonna do like a number rating. What we'll do is this. No, 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 no. Uh, what I'll say is this: OS. You can watch random episodes and be fine. Yeah, like you uh, can or, hop into this and just like eat a bowl of cereal and just be ready. Orange Islands, you can watch the whole thing, and I think you would be fine. Yeah, because uh, it's short. <laughs> I can argue that even now for the for the veterans, for the ones that did watch, I would say Pokemon was such a at this point was such a generation breaker that people who stopped watching the show now still hold this to this day as like a golden standard for entertainment for their children yeah and then i would say for yeah. uh, johto uh pass i'm gonna be i'm gonna be real with you uh go ahead if it was me if it's just me i'm watching just the league i'll rewatch the league every day yeah everything else i could kind of pass on but if if i wanted to be if i was recommending it to somebody 
you would have to follow a guide for this bitch. I was just I about to ask you that. I would say, would you recommend a filler guide? Yeah. No, uh, not even a filler guide. Just a guide in general. There are certain canon episodes I don't think are that good. I would say... Damn. Damn. I say follow a guide if, you, if you're going to fuck with Jono. So with, o, with OS, you could kind of jump in whatever the hell you want and watch whatever the hell you want. And you'll most likely be fine and entertained. The only problem I see going back to OS is that since a lot of the gimmicks and jokes and gags that they ran with in the let me first that I will specifically watch the dub uh, of OS because I don't think the Japanese version will hit the same way. Definitely not. Yeah, I I wound up getting bored watching them there. And and the problem with OS is that any of the trope episodes that Pokemon would later use as running episodes, like the Haunted Mansion or the Pokemon being by themselves. Or them getting separated between Jesse and James in, in like a maze like area or fucking girls versus guys bullshit like those episodes will feel dated only because they're used so much now. Uh, I still think that OS is the originator of some of the better versions of those episode plots, but just keep that in mind. So I think OS in some ways actually ages worse. But I, Jodo Age is the worst. Of, of the of the three we mentioned yeah. tonight, Jodo Age is the worst. <clears throat> yeah. I think Orange Islands is a little bit better than what it was originally. And OS Age is kind of bad, but not not too bad. If you're looking to strictly be entertained and shut your brain off, this is it. And listen, you guys watch Journey, so you ain't got no standard of quality anyway, so you'll be fine. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you want to be entertained and shut your brain off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you.